What is a home sale contingency? That's what we're talking about today and how it applies to both a buyer and a seller. So stick around. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a realtor located in central New Jersey. Every week I post videos about what it's like to live and work here and guidance on buying, selling, and investing in the area. If this is something that interests you, consider hitting that subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every Monday. In this week's video, we're talking about the home sale contingency or as it's better known here in New Jersey, according to our contracts, the buyer's property sale contingency. You're probably watching today's video because you might fall into one of two categories. You're either a buyer where a home sale contingency is applicable to your situation, or you're a seller who either has received an offer with a home sale contingency or you're about to go on the market and you're just curious about what do you do if you do receive one. So let's talk about what a home sale contingency is. It's a clause in the contract that states that the buyer cannot close on their new home purchase without their existing home actually selling and closing first. This comes into play because either they need the funds out of the home sale in order to fund the new purchase, or they're unable to carry two mortgages at the same time. Their home has to sell and close first in order to complete the closing on the next one. This is a very common situation in real estate. In fact, according to the National Association of Realtors last year, 67% of home buyers were what we call repeat home buyers, which means they were already a homeowner and they were purchasing a new residence. So I get concerns and questions from both sides of the transaction when this comes into play. From the buyer side, the concern and questions really come around the fact that we've got a lot of low inventory out there and how do they compete against other offers when they have a home sale contingency situation for them. On the flip side, I get the concerns and the questions from the sellers about what are the risks with tying up my property with a buyer that has a home sale contingency and what could that mean to their timeline? Now I'm gonna go over some good news. Here in New Jersey, we've actually taken all the guesswork out of a situation like this. We have a statewide New Jersey Realtors standard real estate sales contract. This contract actually contains an entire section dedicated to this specific contingency. It stipulates the expectations on both the buyer's and the seller's side and the protections to each side if the expectations are not met. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna briefly summarize and break down this section of the contract because I think that it's going to answer a lot of the questions you all have out there about the what if and when. Now I'm gonna interject here and say that I am not a licensed attorney. This is in no way giving you legal advice. You should seek proper legal counsel when signing any contract. Here in New Jersey, it's actually not called a home sale contingency, it's called a buyer's property sale contingency. And you as a buyer must disclose if the situation pertains to you when entering into the contract on the new home. On the contract, you actually have to disclose some important information like the actual property address, whether or not it's listed and active for sale, and whether or not you actually have a contract on the property. If you have a contract on your home, you actually have to disclose that contract and its closing date over to the seller side within three business days. You actually have to keep the seller side updated on your home purchase throughout the process, especially if anything changes that could affect the closing date. Now at the time of submitting this offer, if your home isn't even on the market, part of this section stipulates that you agree to go active on the market within five business days of attorney review ending. It also stipulates that you agree to move forward with all reasonable effort to get your home sold, that you're gonna price it reasonably, you're gonna market it fully, and it's gonna go out on the appropriate MLS. Now, once you go out on the market, as soon as you receive a purchase contract, you have to submit that to the seller side, like I mentioned earlier. But if you haven't already done so, once you get that agreed upon contract, you have to submit that over to them within three business days. There's also a section about a deadline. So if your home either isn't on the market or it's on the market and you don't have a contract, the seller could put a deadline date for you to receive a contract by. And if you don't receive a purchase contract on your property by that date, the seller reserves the right to either extend the time frame or cancel the contract. There's also a protection in there in the event that you do have a contract on your property and let's say the closing date gets delayed for whatever reason throughout the process by no fault of your own, then the contract date on your new purchase will also be delayed accordingly. Now, if you're a seller, don't worry, there's an entire paragraph dedicated to protecting you throughout the process as well. It states that you actually reserve the right to continue to market the property. Now, what happens is if you receive another viable offer on your property, you agree to give the first buyer an opportunity. 
A lot of times people call this the first right of refusal. This means that you'll go to your first buyer and, and you'll tell them, look, I have another viable offer. You have two business days to remove the current buyer's property sale contingency. This gives them an opportunity to see if that's a contingency they can remove. If they can actually remove it at that point, they have to show proof, financial proof that they can remove it, and you can move forward with that first buyer without that contingency in place any longer. However, if that first buyer is unable to remove the contingency within the two business days, you as the seller reserve the right to cancel with the first buyer and move forward with the second buyer's offer. Now certainly in this situation, if you're the seller, lean on the team around you, talk to your attorney and talk to your real estate professional about where the, your current buyer is in the process. Certainly if they're listed and they haven't even received an offer, it might make sense for you to be able to move forward with the second buyer. However, if you've been working with this first buyer for a while and their home sale is throughout their whole process, all their contingencies are done and they're set to close, let's say in a week or two, it may not make sense to cancel with them and move with the second one. So timing is critical and lean on the team around you for advice and support. Now here's some tips and advice to both buyers and sellers in this situation. If you're a buyer and you're in a real estate market where competition is high, inventory is low, and there's lots of multiple offers happening on properties, it's important to understand how your home sale contingency offer might be viewed to the seller side. If you're going up against multiple offers and you're going up against a buyer that doesn't have the home sale contingency, well, the terms of their offer are going to reflect as stronger than yours. So my advice is this pertains to you, get your home on the market. The further you are in the sale of your current property, the less important the home sale contingency becomes to the seller. And if you're the seller in this situation and your property has been sitting for a while and there's no offers on the table, well certainly an offer with a home sale contingency is better than having nothing. Look, home sale contingencies are common. Most people need their current home to sell in order to make the next purchase happen. So the reality is if you're buying and selling homes throughout your life, you might fall into this category either on one side or both sides at some point. So as I mentioned earlier, lean on the team around you. It's important to surround yourself with trained professionals that can give you the advice and options so that you can make the best decision for your family. If you're a seller watching this, thinking to yourself, well, if inventory levels are really as low as you say, well, I'm worried about putting my house on the market because it could sell really fast and I wouldn't have found my next house yet. So what are my options in that situation? I'm gonna be talking about that exactly in next week's video, so keep an eye out for that. As always, thank you so much for watching. You know, I really enjoy making these videos for you every week. My goal is to make the content you're looking for, so if you have an idea for a future video, leave it in the comment section below. And if you haven't already done so, consider hitting that subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every week. I'll see you on the next one.